Well, welcome to this tutorial on the DF Player Mini module. Now, I never expected to be making this tutorial because in the model railway world a lot of people use the DF Player Mini, but of late some people have been having problems and I just thought, well, they didn't know what they were doing. But when I ordered a new DF Player for a project I'm working on, when it arrived it didn't work. I ordered another one, it didn't work. I ordered another one and it didn't work. And it's at that point I started to think there might be something up. And uh, it's only when you start to look at the small print on these things that you realize that the module that you've been sent is different to what you expected. The only thing at first that I could see was the modules I'd been sent were not DF player minis, but MP3 T16P version 3s. I got the manual. Both items seem to be identical, so what was going on? Now the thing that was odd about my particular issue was that when I was swapping these units over it was on a pre-made board so there was no changes to the wiring or anything like that so I would expect them to work immediately the SD card was the same SD card so it was a bit of a mystery at first as to why this didn't work so I started doing some work on a breadboard and suddenly I had the unit working so I was a bit baffled as to why they would work on a breadboard but they wouldn't work on my pre-made unit now what I'm going to do is swap the screens and we'll just have a quick look at these two units now as you can see at uh, first glance you sort of think you've got a couple of identical modules but actually as you start to look at them you realize that there's a component here that is not over here and when you look at the back of them although this chip seems to be identical this chip and this chip are completely different so although I would have expected them at first to be a straight swap suddenly you start to think okay there's something different what is going on and what are the needs that one has that the other has now just a quick look at the setup of these things just so you can see how they're connected uh, in my um, examples I'm using VCC 5 volts uh, you've got the RX and TX which is what we will use to control it I'm using the two speakers and uh, that and obviously the ground now on the other side you've got a few different um, pins now when I couldn't get the system to work using uh, the serial what I actually did was connected um, shorted out I think it was IO2 or IO1 to ground and that actually causes a track to play so at that point I knew that my unit was working but I just didn't seem to be able to get it to work with the sketch that I'd written for my existing model railway system so that's when life started to get interesting and we'll start to look at what was going on now this is the circuit that I was using um, the resistors here are optional some people say they should be in some people say they should be out I haven't got them in my current system and the board is working fine without it but it's one of those tests I did when I was trying to get the thing to work and I did put them in. Some people have also suggested that both grounds need to be connected however again I've managed with just the ground on the left hand side working. So let's start to look at the Now when it comes to the sketches I've written a sketch for the ESP32, uh, the Arduino Mega and an Arduino Uno the reason for doing one for each is the serial connections are slightly different on the uh, Uno you need to use software serial the Mega obviously doesn't need it and an ESP32 is a slightly different setup anyway so this first sketch I'm just going to explain how I've got this thing working I'm not using any libraries at all so 
because the Mega has multiple serials, obviously we've got in the setup one serial that will go to the um, serial port monitor and then I'm using serial 3 to send commands to the uh, DF Mini or the MP3 lots of letters after it whatever they call it. Now if you notice what I've done there's no libraries in here and all I've done is I've written a set of functions this one is called change volume and if we go above to that uh, function so what I'm doing is sending a value of 20 which means I want to set the value at 20 and then it sends a what I've got a function send df command uh, hex you know 0, 06 and the volume now what this is to do with is the commands that are used here to control this unit now when it sends the command there's a function up here. You don't need to know how all of this works, to be honest, but this basically sends these different bytes of data that are required. There is a start byte, which basically lets the, um, the player know that this is the beginning of a command. Various other bytes. Then we've got the actual command. Um, feedback if it's needed. Sometimes there's a parameter, so for instance we might be sending the volume or we might be sending the track we want to play. Then there is a checksum and an end bit. Now in the code in this function you've got the various commands that are going through. So you've got that start bit, the version, um, data length, the command that's being sent, feedback, I want some feedback on mine, um, and then two bits of data, a high byte and a low byte, and a checksum and that end bit. Now, if you're using this sketch, you really don't need to worry about that sort of thing, but if we go through the functions on here, if we want to change the volume, we can see we send a command of 06 and the value that we send then is a value between 0 and 30. So when we look at my um, command here I'm sending 06 and the volume to this function above that deals with it, encodes it and sends it all off as it should do. Now you'll notice we've got an increase and a decrease volume and for those, they've got a VAT sends a command of 0.4 or 0.5 and no data parameter afterwards. Now the reason for that is it increases or decreases the volume just by sort of one notch. So it doesn't need to send anything. Hopefully you're starting to get the hang of how this thing works now. So if I want to play the next track which is obviously whatever the next track is, I'm not choosing it. Again, I send the command of 0, 1 and a 0 afterwards. It doesn't require any data. Whereas if I'm send, I want it to play a specific track, I'm going to say 0, 3, which is specified track. And then I'm going to send the track number. So that's roughly how the functions work. And I've just written the ones that I actually require. But obviously, if you wanted to write some extra functions, you would just use the manual. There is a link to the manual on the Digital Town website, and you can read up on the rest of any ex extra functions you want. So that's basically how the sketch works. And this first sketch, at first, I you can uncomment this and just sort of play the next track. It just plays it for two seconds. And then I did on my card, I'd got about 20 tracks on there. So I just went from track 5 to track 15, playing two seconds per track. Now, at this point, it worked. And I couldn't work out why the unit was working, and yet it wouldn't work on my other sketch. And this is what I discovered. So I'll have show you... A slight difference on my sketch. So this is where I started to find the issue. On the sketch I've just shown you, 
it's sending a command, then it's waiting a couple of seconds, and it's playing the next, then it's sending the next command. In the sketch that I had written for my model railway, I had a change volume command immediately followed by um, a command to play a track. And I think this is where the issue starts to come up. What I did was I put a one second delay in between the two and all of a sudden everything worked. Now when I started to go through the manual I did find a reference to putting a delay of um, 100 milliseconds so that should read 100 in there but I'd done what I'd done by that point but it the difference between these two units seems to be that the DF player seems to be able to handle commands coming much faster than the mp3 tf 16p version 3 so if you're getting a problem where suddenly it's not working just put a delay in between your commands and see if that helps now what i'm going to do next is show you the sketches that i've written for the different boards so I did a sketch for the Arduino Mega. Uh, the difference between this sketch and the previous one is on the previous one it's just sending uh, a command saying play a track or play the next track, change the volume, that's fine. But what I was trying to do with the model railway was I wanted it to play a track, then I wanted to know when that track finished so that I could then send a command to play another track. So for that part, if we go into the manual, he says, looking for it rapidly, um, there is a set of returned data when various events have happened. Now, I'm not going to go into this in detail, but obviously the thing that I was interested in is, has it finished playing a particular track? Now, to do that, um, he says, looking for the correct bit of the sketch. Here we are. So to do that, I basically was on the Mega because I'm using Serial 3. I'm checking, is there any information coming on Serial 3? It's reading the bytes. And the first thing it's doing is it's it'll ignore everything until it gets a command of 7E. Now, the reason for that is that is the command that says this is the beginning of of some returned information what you need to be careful of is obviously if it suddenly started getting some information halfway through the returned um, command you'll never get to the end so your sketch will never r finish so what this is doing is as it's getting commands coming through it's collecting up the information and um, once it knows what it's doing um, once it knows a tracks finished which is basically that one there the tracks finished it plays the next track it's as simple as that now this version was for the mega which obviously has multiple serial ports if you're using an uno you're going to have to include the software serial library. So basically all these sketches are identical apart from how they connect to the serial. So this one's using the software serial library. So you'll see in the setup my serial begin. And then if I go down to the ESP32, which again is slightly different, you've got to define your uh, RX and your TX pins and again um, in the setup he says scrolling through all this code there's the way that the serial is defined and started now the board I've got in front of me happens to be an ESP32 so I'm going to just go with this sketch as I said they're absolutely identical so in this sketch the first thing I've done is uh, I put a delay just to let everything settle down that's because in my model railway sketch there's a load of other stuff that goes in here I've then changed the volume I've got a delay of um, 100 milliseconds and then it plays track 4 
Now, if I connect this thing up and uh, get the serial monitor running, just plug myself in. Cables everywhere. Right, so let's start the unit, he says. Now, I'm going to start the board. Uh, the commands are going to fly up the screen pretty quick. Uh, so, uh, because the sound files I'm using are very short, you might hear them in the background. There's sort of horns and whistles. So, here we go. Board started. Okay. I'll stop it there because that's the background bird song. Let's go through the code and see what's happening. So on the left we've got our code, scrolling to the top there, so here we've got a command sent and it will be the uh, change volume. Then we've got a track that's selected is track 4 and the command sent we can see we're going to play track 4. Then what happens is track 4 has played and this is when we start looking at these return bytes because all of a sudden I've got a set of commands coming through it's a response to something then we've got another um, set of commands coming through this is one of the problems when you start to use the return string you start to get all sorts of stuff coming through and of course what I'm looking for is a particular um, command I think it's that one there which means that is the end of the track that was playing now that is this um, bit here so if I get a return code of 3D in return codes 3 so that's uh, item 4 in the array sorry so 0, 1, 2, 3, so item 4 in the array, item, however arrays work. But anyway, if I get a 3D, that means I've got the end of the track. So at that point, I then play my next track. Again, I've got a set of commands coming back, different things happening. You see that 3D again, and I play another track. So if you go into the manual, obviously there's lots of different return commands you could write your code to do a number of things depending on those return commands in my case all I'm interested in is this particular one for 3D now uh, if you're interested in the model railway side I'll be doing another tutorial soon on the effects decoders and how I get them to work which obviously expands on this but at the moment this is basically how this DF uh, player works or this other unit mp3 with lots of numbers and letters after it works that main thing just make sure that you're getting a little bit of a delay in there so that you can um, so you don't send too many commands at once now there's a link uh, below the video to the site on the Digital Town website which will give you all the code and all the other bits and if this was useful please click the like and subscribe uh, it's been a bit of a rush tutorial again one I wasn't expecting to do but finished up doing it because people were getting confused so I hope it's helpful for you bye for now